Hi, I'm Cheryl Sitz. Today we explore how to communicate with children, even those that society labels special needs, spirit to spirit, mind to mind. Welcome to another episode of Exploring Possibilities on Apple Podcast, Google Play, Stitcher, my website, journeyofpossibilities.com, and the best of the best are now on youtube.com slash Cheryl Sitz. Every week we come together and create this show with the mission that we can help you explore holistic spiritual ways that you can transform life from the inside out. And we'll speak with today's guest, Eric Von Eaton, in just a moment. Mario Rosales of Tech Life Balance and I invest a lot of time, energy, and yes, even our money into creating high quality podcasts every week to help you learn and grow and shift in these times. If you find value in them, please help us keep doing what we're doing with your contribution. Any amount is appreciated at journeyofpossibilities.com slash support. We can't do it without your help, so thank you. You know, Mario, we've been doing this for a while, and we've learned a lot from these guests week after week from around the world. How long have we been at this? We've been here since 2012 on this podcast. And what do you guys think? Are you enjoying the content? How about you? Have you actually thought about doing one also? I know when I started with Cheryl, Cheryl was like, what in the world is a podcast? <laughs> and I thought it was an excellent way for her to get her message out. And I want to share this with you also. So if, if you want a podcast or if you've been contemplating, what kind of message would you want to put out in a podcast? And I start you from the beginning, just like I started with Cheryl. So why not contact me at marioversales.net or at techlifebalance.net? Thank you so much. Who are you? Why are you here? What wonders and opportunities await you beyond physical death? What happened millennia ago to create the damaged earth and fractured societies you see around you? Empowering, enlightening, internationally acclaimed, the Joseph Communications books offer answers to these questions. Spiritual, concise, contemporary, non-denominational, the communications originate from Joseph, a highly evolved discarnate spirit concerned for you and the future of the planet and its peoples. The words of Joseph and his soul group give you the power to bring light and change into your own life and the lives of others and to restore the earth. Available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook formats, the communications can be ordered today at www.thejosephcommunications.com and also from Amazon and other major booksellers. All proceeds are used for further publishing and advertising and to make the communications available worldwide. Now for today's guest. Erica Von Eaton, founder of Joyful Revelations, helps parents learn how to heal and connect with their children in ways they never knew possible. I'm talking about spirit to spirit, mind to mind. Some of our most precious children communicate differently than we do, and that can be a real challenge for families. Erica helps us learn how to bridge that gap and connect deeply, something she's learned in her journey with her own son. Her website is yourjoyfulrevelations.com. Welcome, Erica. Hi. I am so happy to be in this space with you today. We really appreciate you coming here. I know this isn't your usual thing to come and do an interview, but when I met with you and had the privilege of hearing your story and what you do, I really wanted to have you on the show and share you with listeners because... I've met moms that are challenged by having children that are special, and I mean special in a real good way. I don't mean that label that so many people use. And so hearing your story is really empowering. Can you share a little bit about your journey with your son and how that kind of opened you up to a new way to communicate? Absolutely. Um, so my journey really began about 11 years ago. He turns 11 in May, May 5th, so coming up. And um, it is through him that this journey began. When, we, when he was born, um, we had a very clear connection. I just knew this child. I knew what he wanted. I knew how he felt. Um, and I could tell that he knew me too. So because we had this clear connection, I was able to teach and accelerate his learning so that by the time he was three years old, he knew the alphabet. He could sight read over a hundred different words. He knew colors. He knew shapes. And I wasn't consciously aware of the concepts that I am today. And so I didn't understand how we were communicating. I just, I just knew. 
I just had that clear sense of knowing of what he needed. But I did hold a very big fear in my heart that when he would begin school, that the teachers wouldn't be able to connect with him in the same way that I did and would only see him as a diagnosis. And because that was the primary vibration that I was holding for school, that's exactly what happened. And when he began school at the age of three, preschool, um, pretty much everything that we had was lost within the next two to three years. And my greatest fears came true. He just was a diagnosis to him and they treated him as such. And because they treated him with such a low vibrational understanding of who he was, he became that to them and even at home. And that's when autism became really prevalent. I guess I should have started out by saying that he was born with Down syndrome and that when he began school and his environment shifted and changed, that is when autism became really prevalent. Uh, His sense of humor was lost. He stopped making so much eye contact. Reading went downhill. Laughter, interaction, all of that pretty much was lost. And it was through this desperation that I had to get him back, to bring back the child, the brilliant child that I knew he was, that it awakened me to this other way of being. Simply to find, I was really just looking to find a sense of peace. You know, Erica, you're not the first mom that I've heard say, my child became the diagnosis. And I don't just think children do this. I think we all do this. I think we live into what people call us, what people say we are until we make a conscious choice not to anymore. And for these poor children, that shapes the labels that they then carry. So it's really powerful that you shared that. And, and that must have just been really impactful on the whole family, because here you've got this way of communicating with your child and everything's working. And then suddenly the world doesn't accept it. And you've got to change everything. You've just described what every special needs mom goes through. And many now it's ADD, ADHD. There's so many labels that I think the majority of kids fall into a label now, don't they? Absolutely. And if we can just stop for a moment and look at these children, because Honestly, they are here to be mirrors for us and to teach us what we are doing wrong. And if we can look at them as the brilliant beings of light that they are and understand that what we, the labels, because labels, our words and our thoughts, our vibrations. I mean, this is scientifically proven now through physics. And so we are putting these lower vibrational thoughts and labels upon these children. And so, yes, they develop more of this, of these characteristics that these labels provide. And it, it breaks my heart for yeah. all these people out here and it truly our own doing. I agree. So tell me a little bit about this magical way that you then learned how to maintain and strengthen that connection and communication with your child. Okay. Yeah. It's, um, it seems pretty unbelievable to most at first, unless you think about, I'll just precede this with, for those of you who have had a baby, have had even a pet that you're really close with when they first, you just intuitively have a connection with them, knowing a certain cry, knowing they're hungry, knowing it's that connection and learning how to develop it and deepen it. And so when Caden became more on the autism spectrum because of the things that were happening at school, I started meditating. And when I reconnected to the stillness within myself, I realized that is where most often he resided because it was too painful to be in this outside world. So kids with autism, kids with Down syndrome, kids with ADD, ADHD, They are super sensitive to all the energies going on around in this world. And the only way they know how to protect themselves is to withdraw and go within because they have such a clear connection to their spirit within. They know what the truth is and they know that what they're feeling on the outside world is not the truth of who they are. So the only thing that they can do because nobody around them is validating the truth of who they are on the inside because we've never been taught 
they withdraw and go within. They check out from the outer world because they're like, it's painful out there. It hurts. I don't want to be out there. And so when I learned how to reconnect to this inner sense of self, and I was able to see Caden, that's the name of my oldest son, in this in this way and understood that that's where he was connecting, he was more able to identify with me because then he could feel the vibrational shift within myself. They respond to vibration very powerfully. Right. So that was the beginning of his light switching back on. And from there, I then learned how to, I then learned about the pineal gland and how it is a sender and receiver of thoughts of information. If you, at the time, I was a cardiac sonographer in a hospital, which was a brilliant learning experience for me, really, because what a what an ultrasound machine does is send out send out frequencies, and what comes back is a picture. And then I watched some movie, and there was a beluga whale in there, and the beluga whale did, does the same thing. It's echo Doppler, echolocation, and they get back a picture. And I'm like, well, if animals do this, then we do this too, because our DNA is basically the same. So. I had the intention to sit in meditation and just to send Caden thoughts. And at first, I didn't get anything back, but he was receiving those thoughts. And I knew he was receiving those thoughts because he would come back to me later in the day with an answer to a question that I had sent him or do an action to something that I had sent him. So that, that's, kind of, that's how it started. That must have been um, so was, neat the first time that happened. And you're like, wow, there it is. I knew it would work. Yes, right. <laughs> right. And, and it felt like a remembering, yeah. you know, it felt like a remembering of the truth of how we were supposed to communicate in the first place. And children are brilliant communicators like this. They're, it's so natural to them because they're not having to use our language that has so many attachments to it. And we're merely speaking spirit to spirit truth without all the labels, all the attachments and anything else. I love how you said that about language, because we really don't pay a lot of attention to that. And, and until I studied communication, I hadn't given any thought to all the baggage that comes with language. And then now I can't not see it, right? It's in everything. Yeah. What, what I say, chair, and you say, see a chair, you don't necessarily see the same chair I say, but we both nod and pretend we agree and understand. And we didn't even have the same experience. And that's just a chair, right? When it's something more important, there's all this other stuff. And that's if you can even cut through all the head noise. I have had some experience with telepathic communication, which is what you're describing. And it does work. And it works great with animals. For anyone that wants to start playing with it there, they really respond to it. Well, cats are a little less responsive because they're more independent, but you can really do it with like horses are really sensitive to it and, and dogs will respond. It's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. There's actually a study done with, with dogs. Um, and I can't think of the name of the journal that had the study in it, but they, if a dog is left at home while the, while its parents are on vacation and the parents decide to come home early, that dog will wait by the front door will spend all of its time in the front door and shift shift from walking around the home to the front door within a couple of days before the parent arrives back home every single time. So they understand and know telepathically that that parent has decided to come home sooner. I believe that. And I believe people do that too. I remember now that you're yeah. saying that when I was a little girl and I would have a babysitter on rare occasions that I had a babysitter, I knew kind of when my parents were heading back before they headed back. So I do think that we have that. And I think we have just kind of learned to discount it because we become lazy to oral communication in, in mainstream America. But these children to connect with these children, it's great to go back and remember how powerful this is and to work with it. Mm -hmm. really into just to develop it and that they don't have to develop it. They have it. Right. It's us <laughs> as parents. <laughs> and it's just opening yourself up to what's possible. You know, what we have taught been taught from birth up is not this, you know, this isn't mainstream. This isn't what's being taught in schools. This isn't what's being taught in our societies, but um, it is being taught in Eastern culture. 
yes. in cultures that are more open and accepting. And it's time that it come here. And it's really, I see these kids here um, as guides, as teachers to heal us and to heal the false sense of illusion that we've created through separation. Yes, I agree with you completely. I do believe they are our teachers. And when you work with parents, because I know that you help parents kind of develop these skills for themselves so that they can connect with their children. When you work with the parents, what else do you notice is present? Pro probably by the time they come to you, I would guess they've had months, if not years of, of frustration that has done damage outside of just this inability to connect, right? Absolutely. So when you have a child that is born different than the norm, than what you thought was going to happen, there is a real grieving process that you go through. But we tend to harbor, we've never been taught how to process all these emotions, right? We feel them a little bit, but they're painful. So we tend to put a block up, we storm somewhere in our bodies and they lower our vibration. They cause illness and disease. And in order to raise our vibration to meet that of our children, we have to begin to heal. And that's what our children are really asking of us. So part of what I do with one-on-one -on -one work is I'm also an intuitive energy healer. I sit in meditation and this can be done anywhere in the world. Most of my work is done remotely over the phone. I feel into you and your body and I can feel where the different traumas and griefs are held and I bring your awareness down because it isn't because I'm not doing the healing for you. You're doing it yourself and I want to empower you to learn how to do this so then you can help your family. Um, so I bring your awareness there and we lift these emotions up and out of all of your fields to raise your vibration to become more of a vibrational match to your child. That's fabulous work. In fact, I was just doing a workshop last week in which I referenced the book Feelings Buried Alive Never Die. It's a fabulous book. I was going to host the author, but she was unable to join us for her own health reasons. She's getting on in years, but that's become like a handbook on my shelf. It's a great uh, piece of literature for someone to have handy about where the body stores different emotions and how we can go about releasing those. Because you're absolutely right. I was a walking bag of trauma when I first found my healing yeah. ceremonies. And we can't serve anybody if we can't get our own vibrations up. So releasing those is so cathartic. It absolutely is. And, you know, as parents, well, we all have stories, right? That <laughs> before we ever became parents and took this journey, so, but a lot of us have, we have the grief and then we have the shame that we felt grief and then we have the guilt that we felt shame and grief. And then, you know, the list is endless through all these experiences that we've had. So we just have to get them up and out. And it's through that process that a lot of um, reconnection to your inner sense of self happens and can be felt by the people that I'm working with. Sometimes in the beginning when I am, um, explaining how we need to learn how to reconnect with our inner sense of self so we can more identify with our child. People can't feel it. They can't, they have no sense of feeling within because they have so many blocks up and so much baggage, like you said. And so in order to feel that, we have to lift up all these lower vibrations and kick them out. So that can take some time. Meanwhile, are they not able to connect with their children at all? Or does, does it just get a little better as they move through it? They can connect from the get-go. It's just if they want to get better at receiving the messages back. Ah. Your child will always hear you. I send messages to my boys when they're at school, you know, just filling them up with divine love. Because I know school, you're around all these other kids, you're around all this you know, all these teachers and they're going through all their own thing. There's a lot of stress and anxiety that can happen, you know, in a public education system like they're in because there's so many different energies running all the time. Right. right. So um, throughout the day, often if they pop in my head, if I think of them, then I kind of know that they're saying, Hey mom. And so I'll send them some divine love and I'll send them a message and they'll come home and, and respond. That's neat. And how many of us think of people during the day and don't really recognize that maybe that means something? There's just, we've become really disconnected in our modern culture. And for me, the last 10 years of awakening have been about 
recognizing that everything is usually a little bit more than it seems if I want to be aware to it and starting to pay more and more and more attention. If someone crosses my mind now, I'll send them a text, even if it's a little hard or something and just check in. And I usually get back, wow, that's so weird. I was just thinking I could really use somebody to talk to or I'm going through something. So I think that's great that you maintain that level of connection with your kids. So what else can you help parents do? Do you help them learn how to do this telepathy? Absolutely. This is um, not something that I want to do for people, but I want to empower parents to do for themselves because that's really what the kids want. The kids don't want me doing it. They want to be seen and known by their parents. And why this connection is so important is because you're bypassing the false illusion of this diagnosis that society has put on your child on the outside. You're going past the processing limitations of speech and emotion that a a lot of our children have and going straight to their inner sense of self. And when you feel into your child's brilliance, whether they're special needs or not, that's a whole different kind of love and connection. You are learning about divine love and a divine acceptance, not humanness, not of the mind and the ego, which has attachments to love. You know, a lot of us grow up thinking that My parents will love me more if I clean the house better, if I do well in school, if I blah, 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 blah. Well, that's not divine love. That's human love with attachment. And that's what most of us grow up knowing because we've never been taught divine love. Divine love is seeing past that, knowing and seeing, you know, spirit to spirit who this person truly is standing in front of you. And when you connect in that way, you're, you begin to understand that we are all of one body and one mind because we are all divine love and we all come from the same energy source, the source creator, God, you know, infinite intelligence, whatever your term is for that, which brings you comfort. We have never been separate from source creator and we will never be separate because we are all derived from that same energy source. Our children remember this. It's us who don't. And that's why I say they are here to teach us and to guide us and to be mirrors for us. When we see a child acting out in a certain way that is in a way that you see as out of divine love, look at that situation and take 10 steps back, drop out of your head and come into your heart and feel where did that disconnect, disconnected energy come from that's causing this behavior? Is it me? Is it something that I grew up with? And I say that as in the child is doing something that maybe is embarrassing you. And so it's making you self-conscious. Well, that goes back to you're running a vibration of lower self-worth. Maybe you weren't validated as a child. So you grew up thinking that you needed to act a certain way to be accepted in public. And your child is there to show you it doesn't matter what I do, just love me. Does that kind of make sense? It does. And it sounds, I mean, it's, it's accurate. I, I feel the truth of it. And then there's another part of me that's hearing it and thinking, wow, I would really have to become this almost super mom to not react to any of my emotions or any of those circumstances anymore and stay in this higher self. I'm almost trying to achieve complete enlightenment to be an, a good mom for this child. <laughs> oh, I understand that. And um, where is but, the compassion for the mom? Honestly, well, and then these, these behaviors lessen, the more enlightened you do become. The more that you disconnect from the ego and the mind and live within your heart, the less outbursts there are. And it won't affect you as much. You can be like, okay, they're just being a kid. They've run into some energy. They're trying to release it. And this is the only way that they know how right now is to go a little crazy, to go a little nuts. And then they're going to release the energy and we're going to move on. Who cares what what all these people are thinking? As long as they are not impeding upon someone else's energy and projecting, then it's fine. But yeah, it's really hard to accept that. Well, I, I guess, no, that, that helped. So basically it's a, it's a completely, for one thing, it's a completely different way of looking at parenting these children and it's a beautiful way of looking at it. And it's, 
it's taking what I saw to another level. So I'm so glad that I connected with you and you're laying all this out. So now what I see is almost this, that, that mom and dad are the ones in school. It's spiritual school. They don't realize they're in school and they're trying to help their their kids fit into this 3D earth school that they're attending with all the labels and stuff. And the kids are going, Hey, it's you guys that I'm here to teach. It's, it's really a backwards paradigm that takes, it really takes parents out of ego if they want to step into this because they have to realize we're the ones that are going to grow and learn from the children, not the other way around. Absolutely. I mean, that's all parenting is. Yep. (laughs) We've had it backwards for a long time. (laughs) I think deep down, most of us know this, that, I mean, we say all the time, I've learned so much since becoming a parent, but we need to take it to that next level right? because we've been doing it wrong for a long time and we've been just projecting our crap onto our kids. And I'm not saying that like I'm perfect now because I'm not. I still have moments when I'm in my ego, but then I have to, but at least now I'm able to recognize it and I check it. And I don't feel guilty either about having those ego moments. I'm just like, oh, thank you for showing me. You know, when I first started down this path and I, like a lot of parents, when they awaken to this other level of consciousness of seeing and knowing their child, they feel like crap for all this stuff that we've done prior to this moment. Right. You know, it's just, you didn't know what you didn't know. Yes. But now you do. And so now it's time to grow and learn from it and bless it and move on. The children don't hold grudges. It's just us holding this own guilt and shame about and, who we were. And that's the compassion for mom that I was looking for. That's it right there. We didn't know what we didn't know. We're waking up to something else and we can take it from here. And I think learning how to forgive ourselves is one of the greatest lessons we ever get. And, and our kids can give us that for sure, no matter where they're at on any spectrum or no spectrum, all our kids can teach us to forgive ourselves because I don't know anybody that's mothered a child, their own or someone else's that doesn't say, wow, I wish I would have done all these things different or better. That's exactly it. And it was a huge learning curve for me. And there were many nights that I stayed up crying when I awakened to this other level of consciousness, just feeling like, well, it's just, it's guilt and more shame about how I've parented in the past. But then... You know, the more I progress along this path, I realize when I let go of something, when I let go of a pattern and an energy, it's taken out of my kids too. Yes. So even if they are running an energetic pattern that I did in the past, um, I guess we should explain that a little bit. What I'm picking up is that you're back to talking about the vibration. If we put lower vibrational things into them by what we didn't know that that's already really been being raised as we let go of it and shift to a higher vibrational way of being, right? Perfect. Perfectly okay. said. Great. <laughs> yeah. And since, since we're shifting it, our kids are automatically shifting it. So there's no need to feel guilt or shame over anything that we had projected in the past because it's being released and healed. And our kids fully forgive us the instant that we do something stupid because yes. that's just who they are. They're divine love. They are. They really are. They're, they're pure divine love and they don't get hung up in all the stuff that we get hung up in. Right. I was reading this beautiful book by Eckhart Tolle called A New Earth. Have you, have you read it? Yes. Good book. It is. It's a great book. And um, I was listening to his podcast on Oprah Winfrey. She was doing a book club on it. And he said that he, when he was writing the book, that he had seen ducks in a pond Two male ducks, they would come together, they would fight over a space, and then they would both swim off and get up, shake their wings out, shake it off, and then move on along their path. And that's how they would get rid of the energy. Yes. So kids get rid of energy naturally by squiggling, warming, you know, talking, wanting to yell and scream and play. And kids that are labeled with ADD, ADHD, behavior disorders, Those children need to be seen as being highly sensitive to energy and they have the ability to feel and be affected by energy in a way that we're not. So that's the only way that they know how to get rid of all this excess energy. And what do we do? We get after them. We put medication into them to calm them down and we do all these other things instead of fixing the root problem. Right. 
Well, we are learning that when I say we are learning, I guess I mean science is catching up with spirituality about the idea that our bodies have to release this stuff. And that's why in some ceremonies, bodies vibrate, they shake. We have to physically release as well as emotionally releasing, get it out of the body. And that's a good thing. Yep. And why we took recess away from these kids as we see a rise in quote unquote ADD and ADHD, I don't understand. They need to run and play and get that out. <laughs> I completely agree. Kids need to get outside. Yes. Go hug a tree. Yes. <laughs> when my kids come home, my, when my kids come home, they self-medicate. They go, they don't even come inside. They will throw their book bags over the fence and they go get on their scooters or they go, literally my son, my oldest son will, if he's not on a scooter, he will go sit down in the back and he will just dig in the dirt to release all the energy that has been put upon him for the day. That's not something I taught him. That's just something that he naturally did himself. And you can just see him putting his hands in the earth and allowing this energy just to be drained from him. And it's brilliant. Yes. Yes. A lot of it is us getting out of the way and letting intuition show us what we know that we need to do. We've just forgotten to listen, which is a full circle back That's to meditation, right? <laughs> That's exactly it. We forgot how to connect. We forgot how to listen. And it's just remembering. It's just remembering. So. This is wonderful. So your website does a great job of laying out all the ways that an interested mom or dad could connect with you and work with you to learn how to deepen their connection with their children and families, clear some of this negative stuff. What's on the schedule for you? Do you have any events you want to let us know about or anything exciting going on? Um, right now, what I have going on are putting together workshops. So I've been asked to do a workshop in a public school and for a private school. And on May 17th here in the Houston area, I'm going to be doing um, a workshop for the public with Gail Fisher um, and her organization, If We Learn Differently, here in the Woodlands. So I'll post that on my Facebook page. And um, that's about it for right now. That's great. You're, you're heading in such an exciting direction because workshops give people a chance to come in and connect with you and get a taste of what you're about, like they've had here today. And then they can really work with you and go deep. And what is the reward of working with you and going deep? You don't just give them a connection with their families and children. You give them a connection back to themselves. What a great gift. Thank you. Yeah, it's really learning how to remember how to find joy within yourself and joy within your family and joy within your child. That's what it's all about. That's beautiful. Well, I'd like to ask you, Erica, if you have a parting thought that you'd like to leave the listener with today. So many. <laughs> <laughs> um, really, if we can just remember that we are all divine aspects from the same creator. It doesn't matter what your child looks like. It doesn't matter what you have. Those are just illusions that we've created Remember the divine truth of who your child is and know that you are that divine truth too. When you feel love for your child, but then you get pulled out of that love by thinking about, I need to go get groceries. I need to do this. I need to do laundry. Remember that you are that, not those thoughts thinking about what you need to do. But the truth of who you are was that love that you were feeling for your child before you got pulled out of that, that love, that's the truth of who you are, not your thoughts. Hmm. That's awesome. I don't know if anybody's told you this yet, Erica, but I totally see you writing a book. <laughs> <laughs> I've been guided recently that I think I probably need to do that, but mm -hmm. it seems a little bit overwhelming at the moment. <laughs> It won't. It'll flow. As you start to put these workshops together, that kind of forces us to put our message into some kind of order and synthesis, and then it kind of gets easier. I'm going through that too. So I just kind of feel like you have some really powerful wisdom to share heartfully with mothers and fathers. I appreciate you taking the time to be on the show today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for your audience for listening. It's been a pleasure. And yes, listener, let us know what you think. Info at journeyofpossibilities.com. You can show us some support while you're there as well. And we'll see you next week on Exploring Possibilities.